Hi everyone, the Audi Q7, good looking, well equipped SUV. Does it have any problems? Yes it does, let's check them out. Today we're going to be talking about Q7s and some of the common issues they have. We're going to start nice and simple. Um, it's a problem that a lot of cars suffer with, not just Q7s, but we do have issues with the EGR coolers on these particular vehicles. Uh, the diesel 3 litre and the diesel V8, they have the same basic principle. They have an EGR and a cooler that sits inside the V. Uh, it gets very hot in there, there's a lot of stuff going on and unfortunately um, they do clog up and we also have problems with some of the connecting unions. Uh, they get very fragile, they start to crack, they leak out, this causes a bit of a knock-on effect with the whole cooling system but in particular the EGR cooler. Now the injector seals on this particular 3 litre engine have become a bit of an issue. So it'll start off with a, a, a chuffing noise, uh, you'll get some fumes um, coming into the cab um, occasionally misfire, sometimes engine warning lights, maybe even a leak or a sign of something leaking onto the rocker cover or the exhaust manifolds. Now this is a problem with the, the copper seals, the copper washers that go underneath the injectors. After a while they start to wear and this allows fumes and fuel unfortunately to escape which is what you eventually notice. Now there's a bit of a knock-on effect from the problem with the injectors. We've also seen a few fuel pump failures on this particular model. Uh, unfortunately, as the debris builds up from the injectors, this ends up going back into the fuel system. This is then recirculated via the tank back into the, uh, the top end of the fuel system, in particular the, the fuel rail and the fuel pump. Now, unfortunately, the fuel filter isn't capable of stopping everything coming through. Some of the finer particles, they do tend to get into the fuel pump and this in turn starts to break the internals down. Another issue we see with these, again, not particularly just Q7s. Uh, we see it on a lot of diesel models, the DPFs. Um, I'm sure by now they've, they've been around a long time, so most people know what we're talking about when we talk about diesel particulate filters or the DPF. Um, short journeys, not brilliant for any diesel. Most diesels are sort of designed and built for long journeys, long runs, get the engine up to temperature. If you're just going to pop to the shops in it or take kids to school, unfortunately you're going to end up with issues. The DPF is not cheap. They can be cleaned out. This isn't recommended by most of the manufacturers, but as a cost-saving exercise by aftermarket companies, you can now get them cleaned, particularly at GTEC Motorworks. Uh, but that is definitely something to watch out for. So again, another common issue, not just with Q7s, not just with Audis, but most vehicles, modern vehicles, fitted with a, a DPF. Um, the manufacturers have gone for a secondary method of cleaning the DPF, which is the AdBlue system, also known as SCR. And basically they use an additive to run through to help clean the system. Now, this is all great in theory. In practice, it's just something else on the vehicle that has the potential to go wrong. And unfortunately, AdBlue does. There's a lot of stuff involved. There's an injector in the exhaust system. There is numerous pipes. There is a delivery unit at the back with its own separate tank. And um, we have seen a few issues with these, uh, either injectors packing up or becoming damaged, or the um, software quickly becoming out of date, or an issue with the pump and the delivery unit themselves. So one of the things that makes this vehicle so great, so comfortable, um, and an ideal SUV is the adaptive suspension. It's an air suspension system, which for all intents and purposes is brilliant. It's also susceptible to a few issues. So you've got airlines that run to each of the corners. These help to either lift or lower the suspension. Um, obviously it gives it great range, but unfortunately also open to issues. So we have what's technically known as a suspension airbag on each corner. Um, after a while you can get cracks 
in the, the rubber bellows um, on the suspension units, these do split. We have the pipe work, which for the most part is quite reliable, um, but if you do decide to off-road the vehicle, just bear that in mind, it's air pipes. Um, we've also got uh, a large pump and a reservoir and a series of solenoids. This is actually underneath the vehicle, so again, it's a great idea, but as we've discussed before, electrics, water, mud, they're not the best, uh, they're not the best companions, so uh, we do see the occasional issues with those as well. So a great deal of these are fitted with panoramic roofs. Um, we all like a bit of light coming into the vehicle, and when they work, they're absolutely fantastic. We do, however, get issues with the drain tubes. So if the drain tubes get blocked, water builds up, it'll run inside the vehicle via the sunroof mechanism itself, um, and that's of course if it doesn't actually cause the mechanism to seize up. We get water in the motor, we get water in the cables that operate the sunroofs, and long term this can be quite damaging. If you've got one, if you're going to get one, make sure when it's had its service it's also had the sunroof tubes unblocked and it's actually had a sunroof service which actually includes um, ensuring that the rubber stays nice and subtle, make sure it stays uh, watertight, waterproof um, and it should give you years of satisfaction. So the sound system on these vehicles is pretty good. There's a lot of speakers. Some of them are Bang & Olufsen. Um, those that aren't, don't worry, they still get cracking sound out of them. Again, it's an expensive piece of equipment. You've got to make sure it's all working. So if you're looking to purchase one of these, make sure it switches on, make sure you've got sound, make sure all the functions work, because further down the line, you may have to spend some money on it. It may need software updates. Uh, it could need one of many of the components to keep this thing up and running, most of which they're not particularly cheap and unfortunately it isn't something you can just go to any garage and have fitted, they all have to be coded in. Um, they'll have a component protection which stops it being removed from one vehicle and put into another. This is very very difficult to overcome so yeah make sure it's working and if you get a fault on your multimedia system don't leave it too long before you get it looked at. Once one of the units starts to switch off, it causes problems elsewhere and it can become more and more difficult to pinpoint the fault. One more thing to watch out for, particularly, is your electric tailgate. So it's a motorised tailgate, they're quite heavy at the best of times. So on this one we've got the electrical assist, opens at the touch of a button, which is absolutely brilliant. But if you do get a fault, one minute your tailgate's opening, the next minute you're smacking your head on it. So. If you start to have issues with it, get it looked at as soon as possible. Um, some of them can be as simple as a, a small electrical um, wiring issue. Um, others can be a little bit more involved. Uh, one of the electric rams could be, could be faulting. So get it checked out. GTEC Motorworks, we've done a few. So if you do have a problem, you know where to bring it. So all in all, the Audi Q7, whichever one you go for, they're a great vehicle. They've got tons of toys. And if it's been looked after, it'll serve you well. If you do have issues, don't worry, you're not going to get all those issues all at once. Um, but any issues at all, pop it into GTEC Motorworks, let us check it out, let us get them sorted. I'm glad you've joined us today for this video. I hope you like what you see. Um, there will be more to come. So if you click the like and subscribe, and don't forget to share, and we'll see you on the next one.